मैम कंटिन्यू थैंक यू मैम सो वेलकम टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट टू टेंथ डे ऑफ दिस 21 डेज नेशनल ओरिएंटेशन कोर्स ऑन टीचिंग लर्निंग इवैल्यूएशन टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोग्राम वी वेलकम यू टू दिस प्रोग्राम टुडे वी हैव विद अस डॉक्टर राजेश कुमार राणा uh he is working currently as principal scientist in agricultural economics in uh, at icr agricultural technology application research institute dhana since uh, 2017 and dr rana has wide experience of serving in different icr institutions including potato research institute shimla ICR National Institute of Agricultural Economics and Policy Research New Delhi over his scientific career of 28 years Dr Rana has been editor of Potato Journal during 2010 and 2015 he has been associated a scientist from ICR with International Potato Center Lima during 2009 and 2015 Dr Rana has more than 100 research publication in various uh, scientific uh, journals he is recipient of icr nanaji deshmukh icr award for outstanding interdisciplinary team research in agriculture and allied sciences fellow of indian potato association he was also a member of first qrt of icr national institute of biological stress in chatisgarh with the experience of working in farming extension research the right person to deliberate on the topic methods and challenges for impact assessment of frontline extension uh, programs so all are requested to under, understand this topic uh, which is of greater significance especially for those who are working in this kvk system for improving their insight uh, through this topic so we welcome you sir and over to you sir thank you very much dr badhoria uh, good morning to everyone Uh, as uh, Dr. Badaria has already introduced, my name is uh, Rajesh Rana, and uh, I will be discussing uh, the topic methods and challenges of in assessment of frontline extension programs in India. Uh, frontline agriculture extension system in India is one of the most robust system throughout the world. Uh, when it comes to the frontline extension system be it saus be it icr institutes or other research institutes or even the uh, and the, the most important part the kvk uh, the frontline extension system in india is doing very well uh, there is no system in the world which is handling one, more than 140 million farmer families or farm families uh so efficiently and uh, so uh, meticulously in fact when we are in the system then we see so many difficulties so many problems in the system and uh, uh, we can list uh, many things which are not perfect but mostly we compare or we uh, pinpoint our problems with our experiences of uh, western world which is not applicable here uh we will discuss it Uh, in the following slides why we, our conditions are different than uh, the conditions in developed countries and uh, our system has to be different than uh, the systems which are uh, adopted in uh, other developed countries uh, before that i would uh, stress upon some of the recent developments in uh, indian council of agriculture research uh, particularly the agriculture uh, uh, research wing of uh, the icr uh, now icr is being corporatized uh, gone are the days when whosoever enter the job his job is secured his uh, everything is granted now more and more emphasis is on resource generation and when resource generation will become the responsibility of the farmers in the near future and they will have to sustain their salaries when that kind of situation comes then 
the most important aspect becomes the accountability of the funds which the funding agency has provided to the research system uh, and impact assessment is the most important or the credible evidence which stands for you for a scientist in order to defend or in order to establish the accountability of the funds which were provided and the way they were used so uh, it becomes very important to know how we have to assess the impact and unfortunately the frontline extension system in india is working very hard they are doing so many research activities they are doing so many developmental activities but they are not having uh, they are not having sufficient uh, capacity building or uh, sufficient uh, motivation or sufficient stimulus for uh, assessing the impact of their work so now it has to change so that's why we have designed this particular topic in order to help our uh, particularly the younger scientists who are in the system uh, now i know that uh, lecture becomes very boring and uh, in a training of 21 days where there are so many lectures so it is very difficult for anybody to uh, consume or uh, uh, to accept another lecture so in order to mitigate that impact i have tried to uh, discuss this topic in the form of a case study i know you don't have any field visits to, you don't have any sightseeing uh, sessions so you might, there is quite natural for you people to become uh, boring in this training so in order to avoid that particular aspect we will be discussing a case study throughout the uh, presentation and how to handle it so uh, now when it comes to impact assessment then we need to understand what is impact in fact impact has been used or is uh, if we go for the classical english uh, meaning of uh, impact then impact is associated with the negative outcomes for example impact sports where there is injury there is trauma there is stress so impact is associated in those type of activities then uh, impact uh, printers this was the term earlier where dot metric printers were are called impact printers because they used to leave some impressions on the paper uh, on the other hand what is the effect effect is outcome which is of uh, uh, neutral of positivity or negativity but then why we are using the term impact uh, assessment uh, rather than effect assessment uh, because effect is generally neutral that just states the outcome of some event and impact on the other hand describes the effect of the effect on the life of the people uh, in a simple example if i say that uh, global warming or the climate change uh, the climate change is a variable and its effect is uh fluctuation in temperatures the fluctuation in uh annual temperature or monthly temperature whatsoever the fluctuation in temperature that is effect and what is the effect uh, of uh, fluctuating temperature on crops and the income of the farmer that is the impact of uh, climate change so in this way we will explain uh, further and uh, next slide these are just uh, two pictures which uh, describe the impact impact of glaciers 
and then impact of floods so impact is uh, classically used in negative uh, with the negative outcomes now it comes to agriculture uh, frontline uh, agriculture extension system the frontline agriculture extension system is uh, comprised of uh, uh, icr saus krishi vigyan kendras and uh, some of the activities are also undertaken by the agriculture uh, technology uh, information center etics they are supporting the uh, state level agriculture ex uh, extension system or uh, the uh, uh, i mean uh, the atma or state uh, agriculture uh, uh, extension uh, machineries that they are also supporting other ministries also and uh, for example uh, uh, agriculture and rural development panchayati raj ministry broadcasting uh, water resources and uh, private agencies ngos etc then frontline extension system basically uh, is the first step for transferring the nascent technologies from uh, the institute from uh, from where, uh, where they are generated uh, why our conditions are different than the conditions uh, in the developed countries so now this table describes that how many farm holdings the farmers holding were in 2005 2006 they were 129 million 12.9 crore then they increased to 138 million during 2010 to 2011 in 2015 2016 this is a la latest situation assessment survey which is available uh, now we will be uh, having 22 23 survey and then we will be having the fresh figures but the uh, the number of uh, farm households it has increased to 146.5 million there is a pattern uh, here uh, these all are percentages the percentages of large households it is decreasing it was 0.8% in 2005 2006 it decreased to 0.7% and then 2.57% in 15 16 medium their uh, their proportion is also decreasing the proportion of semi medium is also decreasing uh, however there is only single category where proportion is increasing that is a marginal farmers it is not about the number number of uh, farmers might have increased in small farmers also but their proportion in the total farmer it has decreased but on the other hand the only category where the proportion has also increased that is marginal farmers so the marginal farmers they are increasing in number day by day and small and marginal farmers put together they constituted 86 percent of the total farm families now the latest figures they are showing 87 88 percent so the proportion of small and marginal farmers it has further increased so most of our efforts the efforts of agriculture extension system in india that is confined that should be confined to small and marginal farmers if we are ignoring them then we are failing in our responsibilities if in the process of selecting samples if we are going only to the large farmers because they are offering us tea, we are in a position to sit comfortably uh, uh, and enjoy their hospitality, then we are not doing the right things. Our results of impact assessment uh, exercises will represent more of large farmers rather than the overall uh, representation of the entire farm families. So this is the most important aspect which we have to uh, take into consideration when we plan, when we go for uh, our impact assessment exercises. I will repeat the same uh, phenomena with another type of uh, evidence or with, with another type of uh, thumb rule uh, in the end of this presentation also. Uh, before we uh, proceed further 
uh, we have to put some time you know, on the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat analysis of uh, different uh, frontline extension system agencies. There are eight or nine extension uh, agencies which have been listed here, but we will be discussing only three, which are KVKs, state agriculture universities, and ICAR institutes. So their strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats as extension agency. Because when we understand these things, when these things help us in uh, formulating plans in a right perspective and executing plans in the right perspective. So strength of uh, KVK is most of us, we know that very high returns to investment. There was two, three years before a study from uh, uh, IFRI, Indian Food Policy Research Institute, that every one rupee invested in KVKs, it returns back, KVKs system returns back from 6 rupees to 11 rupees uh, under different assumptions and different scenarios. Then KVK system is a well-established extension pro, uh, system in, uh, in the world, then well-funded, then disseminate pan india robust technologies this is the only system in india which uh, disseminates uh, the best technologies uh, from any source otherwise icr institute they are biased towards their own technologies saus they are also biased towards their own technologies then holistic approach no ICR Institute provides holistic uh, solutions to the farmers. They provide solutions only related to their own uh, area of core competence. For example, a institute working on dairy, for example, NDRI Karnal, then they will base, uh, provide solutions related only to dairy. If uh, uh, there is another institute, uh, suppose uh, one institute uh, on vegetable, uh, uh, Indian Institute of Vegetable Research, suppose, provide solutions only uh, related to vegetables. But if farmer has some problem with his cow, some problem with his buffalo, then those people, they are not in a position to handle that. So KVKs, they provide holistic solutions to the farmers. So this is a biggest strength, which is uh, rather missing in uh, other areas, so, uh, there are universities which have the holistic solution, but they don't have the approach, uh, sorry, uh, they don't have the reach and uh, they don't have the very strong connect with the farmers, except few universities, uh, just like PAU or uh, HAU or Pantanagar. Most of the universities, they don't have uh, the right kind of reach. So these situations, we should understand, uh, we should well understand only then we can make the right kind of uh, solutions, right kind of plans. Then weaknesses are uh, KVKs. KVKs have reach only, uh, effective reach, only uh, 8 to 15 villages. In most of other villages, they are just spreading uh, knowledge, but not systematically. As far as systematically coverage uh, is concerned, they can handle eight to 15 uh, villages mostly in a, a district so in order to reach uh, more villages uh, there should be more kvks or the manpower should be increased in uh, the kvks then increasing non-mandated activities everyone has, uh, knows talent shifts from uh, kvk system to research system this is the biggest challenge because the scientific uh, recognition or the uh, 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 the scientific recognition of the activities or the work carried out at the KVK is, is not that prestigious, which is uh, when we compare it to the research system. So that is a biggest weakness as well as threat also for the existence of uh, KVKs in the future. Uh, time consuming reporting, uh, everyone of, uh, knows lack of uh, subject matter specialists in most of the KVKs. Uh, there are opportunities. There are very strong opportunities. Excellent team for a farming system approach. Now, policymakers, they have started recognizing the importance of farming system research. 
ऑर्गेनिक सिस्टम अप्रोच सो केवी केज आर द बेस्ट इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर दैट एज फार एज फ्रंट लाइन एक्सटेंशन इज कंसर्न देन स्ट्रॉन्ग कन्वर्जेंस एबिलिटी विद अदर लाइन डिपार्टमेंट एंड अदर एजेंसी विच आर वर्किंग इन द फील्ड सो दे हैव वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग कन्वर्जेंस देन केवी केज आर द best agencies in abnormal circumstances they have shown it they have established it during the covid pandem pandemic when most of the agencies they become defunct kvks remain functional they were in the con uh, contact with the farmer they uh, they maintained the uh, supply chain of inputs um, uh, through various means uh, the digital uh, extension was evolved to a great extent and it was used by kvk so efficiently during that time that network project with additional manpower now most of the network projects are being given to the uh, kvk which are having additional manpower so manpower is being strengthened possibility of additional staff in the kvk is there however kvk or the host organization uh, or Uh, even the icr they need to provide uh, some contractual staff to the kvk so provisions have to be made uh, if, if we uh, further want to strengthen kvk now then these atma and line departments we can skip it then uh, sort analysis of saus as extension agencies we will not cover it uh, very uh, in great detail but uh, as cursory uh discussion knowledgeable staff as far as uh, sc users concerned specialized they are specialized and specialist of a subject obviously knows uh, much better than a general uh, general scientist who knows so many subjects then generator of technologies state agriculture universities they generate technologies uh, so this is a great strength as far as front front line extension system is concerned then they have uh, shown the how efficiently kisan milas can be used uh, when it comes to uh, front line extension system is uh, when uh, front line uh, extension system is concerned then input supply is being managed by say use these, these are their strengths uh, under weaknesses they promote uh, they have tendency to promote their own technologies then uh, Uh, sometimes they popularize technology without adequate sp- supply management the, uh, there is uh, not adequate supply management technologies are popularized then they are, they don't reach to the farmers and uh, uh, entire effort on the research uh, uh, or technology development that goes waste well uh, uh, the lack of insight into the field realities most of the scientists who are working in uh, labs uh they lack the adequate insight of the field realities field realities are in fact different than what we assume or sometimes what we read in research papers so that is a weakness and this is the weakness of icr system also and then opportunities uh some of the sa users i would say that particularly uh, pau ludhiana because we are uh, uh, working in close coordination with them so i know uh, about them self other may also be trying they are developing two way communication system or uh, an it platform with that platform they will be having reach to uh, a pre targeted for then better public uh, private partnership this is being recognized both at icar as well as as saus now uh, public private partnership they, it is being promoted then common uh, service centers are established uh, which are used very efficiently threats uh, the biggest threat of uh, saus as extension agencies again the same uh, now promotions are being done on scorecard and scorecard they don't have uh, adequate representation of uh, activities which are uh, which are done for uh, extension system then deteriorating extension system uh, of the in house uh, extension system of the uh, sa use it is being deteriorated and all of the burden is uh, slowly and gradually shifted to the kvk system so that is hurting the kvk
then it comes to icr institutes more or less same uh, strengths and weaknesses which were of sau uh, with some different quality uh, technical input is there efficient technology dissemination teams uh, whatsoever reach they have icr institutes i don't think they have sufficient reach but whatsoever reach they have they are very efficiently delivering because their team is very efficient they are doing meticulously then uh, they have very strong they are very strong trainers of master trainers so in fact they are preparing for extension system the uh, critical input uh, in terms of uh, trainers they are providing very uh, uh, good quality trainers but the weaknesses are also there in icr system as far as extension is concerned they lack comp uh, comprehensive solutions i have already discussed it then they have limited reach and uh, uh, scientists are recruited uh, from uh, pan india if some uh, person from tamil nadu is employed in punjab then he will have language problem uh, and vice versa uh, then uh, inadequate supply of seed material is uh, this is again the problem of icr system also which is which was the problem of uh, saus then inadequate uh, significance of extension activities in asrb scorecard this is uh, the same problem the uh, scientists lack insight into the farmers realities the, the same uh, is the situation in icr institutes which was uh, with the saus then opportunities uh, outsourcing icr is such a system where outsourcing uh, of uh, contractual services it has been very efficiently used so this ability will provide them a future uh, potential of handling uh, extension system more efficiently by uh, making use of uh, outsourced services then easily collaborate with the other agencies they have a higher emphasis on uh, public private partnership and threat threat is unsustainable field rapid whatsoever icr institutes are doing in extension system if they are building rapid with some of the farmers in some of the villages and they don't continue it forever after some time that rapid is broken and the uh, uh, whatsoever uh, is done that is being evaporated then depleting technical staff in if extension system has to be robust then technical staff uh, should be handling it because most of the scientists they are uh, employed for technology generation so this is a lacking part uh, we will be skipping the corporates as extension agencies then uh, ngos as extension agencies also then uh, FPOs, FPOs as extension agencies, then uh, input dealers. Input dealers, uh, they are also important extension agencies, but we will be skipping it for the time being. Now it comes to uh, the topic uh, how, uh, what different activities are being performed by the extension system, uh, particularly KVK. KVK is what activities they are performing they are providing support services then capacity building capacity building is most important or one of the conspicuous uh, activity or uh, i would say group of activities uh, as uh, when it comes to the kvk then technical support they are uh, doing on farm trial fld cfld's method demonstrations etc uh, then campaigns and drives so these are the basic uh, groups of activities the healthy seed of uh, high yielding varieties they are producing seed and they are providing seed sometimes they are, if they are not producing then they are uh, arranging it from somewhere else and providing to the farmers and healthy planting material uh, then uh, uh, soil and water, uh, water leaf analysis improved scientific uh, practices for example high density planting and balanced use of fertilizer integrated nutrient management integrated pest management precision farming high tech agriculture other scientific agronomic practices uh, we everyone know that uh, uh, these activities are being taken up uh, by the kvk system but how to uh, assess their impact what should be the impact indicator where uh, should we focus so all these activities their uh, ultimately yield or net income 
we will have to focus on these two aspects either yield or net income of the firm ultimately net income is the more reliable and more convincing uh, uh, indicator of impact rather than yield if yield in, is increasing but the cost of cultivation is increasing at much higher level the net profit of the farmer will decrease and that will not be uh, that will that will not be generating the desired impact so as far as uh, when it comes to impact then uh, we should rely more on net income these are other activities skill development uh, skill development yield will increase income will also increase specialized projects like aria the same and then gen, uh, general training plant protection is there uh, mostly these are all uh, represented by higher income or yield uh yeah. there are technologies or activities related to animal sciences also for example feeding uh, uh scientific feeding of livestock mineral supplements then disease and pest management in livestock uh then supplementary uh, uh enterprises are there apiculture is there mushroom poultry goat wheat agree dairy farming uh, then uh there are so many supplementary act activities which are being used to enhance uh farmers income uh if when it comes to solar energy farming uh, then there is no yield or uh, yield is not uh, the right parameter only the net income enhancement of the farmer or uh, we can say the uh, net reduction in his cost otherwise he will have to pay for electricity so whatsoever is saved that is the impact and what's uh, that is the impact on farmer and what is the impact on environment what is the impact on uh, national economy that is a different aspect we can concentrate on that aspect also then uh, advisories field visits these uh, these are technical sports so many things we are doing uh, contact farmers are there kisan melas field days tv radio program publications pamphlets folders booklets posters uh, then uh, marketing through different uh, uh, modes indirect role of kvks through kisan call centers uh, through uh, apps mobile or computer apps kvks are contributing there also so mostly the impact indicators are yield or income in uh, net income uh, cfld if uh, integrated farming system drip irrigation drip irrigation has a role on uh, water conservation also uh, so water conservation uh, should also be the impact indicator here or uh, environmental consequences are there when it comes to water conservation uh there is a uh, important thing where lot lot of uh, uh emphasis is there uh, the crop residue management machines for example happy seeder uh, dsr or super sms uh, enabled uh, uh, combined harvesters so these machines basically what they are doing they are reducing uh, the crop residue burning so indirectly they are uh, helping us to conserve our uh, environment or conserve resources and uh, mitigate pollution so their impact indicators will be different rather than just yield enhancement or income enhancement so similarly organic farming or cluster based uh, farm uh, natural farming is there so they are also related to resource conservation and uh, uh, pollution mitigation health promoting uh, uh, effects are there so they have to be uh, considered uh, with different impact indicators then there are campaigns and drives also crop residue management again uh, they have to be treated similarly Nutri nutritional awareness because uh, important uh, emphasis uh, uh, of the frontline extension system is on nutrition gender some uh, like that so what workable parameters can be there there can be different parameters which uh, are difficult to handle at broader level or uh, 
or uh, by every agency but uh, there are some indicators for example body mass index when it comes to body mass index then the most important variable is weight then hemoglobin uh, when it comes to uh, mitigation of anemia is concerned anemia is a major problem uh, in indian uh, situation so uh, their impact indicators will be different and if there uh, is a very specialized and uh, adequately funded projects then impact indicators could be uh, other uh, uh, specialized indicators also maybe on health or uh, uh, general well being these are eight areas where uh, network projects have been assigned by the icar indian council of agriculture research has constituted uh, a research advisory committee and that research advisory committee has uh, uh, approved these following eight network projects and these network projects they their impact assessment is the most important uh, activity under these net, network projects so now we are coming to our main topic the uh, time is left is uh, i think only 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes so we will be discussing uh, now we will be assuming one example so whatsoever we will be discussing we will be referring to that example the example is uh, uh, for those people who are not working in KBK system, who are working in KBK system, they are already handling it. The, suppose it is a project on natural farm. The project will be uh, implemented for next three years. And for next three years, the project will be implemented in uh, 425 districts of uh, India. And uh, under that project, suppose we have to conduct 10 trainings and uh, in the coming three years and we have to cover 400 farmers from each district 10 trainings in each district uh, by every kvk and uh, 400 farmers uh, from every district and we have to conduct 100 demonstrations demonstrations means a farmer who can do natural farming at, uh, at his own and uh, the farmers from adjoining areas can come to his farm and see and learn how the natural farming is being done so those are the activities then uh, promoting it uh, uh, on uh, spreading it on wider and wider areas through uh, publication through awareness programs through uh, exposure visits or uh, uh, other miscellaneous activities so suppose this is a project then how we can assess its impact so now impact can be on three different aspects so three different parameters one is the impact of trainings what when we are providing uh suppose 10 trainings per kvk for 400 farmers then how to assess its impact of trainings then we have to go for impact assessment of training then we should have a benchmark data of every farmer if, uh, and that benchmark data has to be taken before we start of the training then there should be a uniform training uh, module it should not be varying uh, across the trainings or across the kvks it should be a uniform uh, training schedule and uh, after before and after the training we should have knowledge test of the farms then it should uh, not be stopped just uh, after the training that after six months or after one year there should be follow-up uh, assessment of the knowledge of the farmer and in addition to assessment of that knowledge 
uh, what is the outcome whether the intended outcome has been achieved whether the farmer has started uh, or get, uh, natural farming or not so these type of indicators we are generating a kind of uh, manual for that but i, I uh, in uh, this presentation i just want to uh, share how it can be done then that is impact of this training uh, afterward what is the impact of uh, overall project on the socio economic life of the farmers for that we have to go for baseline survey of adopters as well as non adopters so under kv case uh, i'm just summarizing it uh, in detail we will be covering it we will be discussing all these aspects uh, in our later presentation so when uh, both the approaches we will be taking one is before after and another is with without with without means uh, adopted non adopted and the uh, before after means 2022 versus 2026 or 2027 so that is uh, we will be comparing it uh, in two ways and uh, uh, we whatsoever we can prepare we can prepare it for uh, difference and difference approach as well as uh, uh, psm pro propensity score matching approach third the gold standard approach is uh, uh, rct that is uh, randomized control trial but randomized control trial uh, uh, establishing randomized control trial is so meticulous and so difficult and it has to be done before the project is being implemented so sometimes we are not sure that project will come or it will remain for 3 years so uh, under such kind of uncertainty we generally uh, avoid uh, rct or randomized control trials but before that data collection data collection is the most important aspect and uh, what kind of mistakes we are doing primary data primary data everyone of us knows that whatsoever we are collecting for the first time that is secondary uh, primary data and whatsoever is available with some other agency and we can use that data uh, um, either on payment basis or if it is uh, freely available then we can use it freely then that is secondary data when it comes to primary data the most important mistake or the blunder we are doing we are going and uh, uh, we are interacting simultaneously with a group of 3 4 farmers then the dominating farmer tries to uh, influence the uh, response of all other farmers and that data is generally a socially uh, best percep perception but no, uh, that is not the best that is the uh, social perception of the people and not the individual perception and it should be avoided whenever we go to the field we should interact with the individual individually it should be personal interview so we call it personal interviews when it is personal interviews even his or her uh, spouse should not be influencing his response so how we can do this is not easy this is difficult but if we uh, have to generate right data good data then we have to take all these things into consideration and uh, slowly and gradually we come to know that if farmer is bluffing then we should not include that data into the overall data set in secondary data the so uh, ensuring the credibility of the data is the most important i have seen so many researchers particularly phd students or the early uh, uh, career scientists they give excuse this is not my data this is data of that uh, particular agency so if uh, his or her results are uh, uh, not uh, as expected then they try to hide themselves be, uh, behind uh, the data source that is the most irresponsible uh, i would say irresponsible uh, research if someone is providing data if to, to establish the credibility of that data is the responsibility is the most important responsibility of the researcher and if we are presenting uh, results then 
if we are presenting results on the basis of wrong data then we are stupid scientists and whosoever is doing that that is not worth calling a scientist so establishing credibility of the secondary data is the most important role of a researcher then sometimes there are gaps in secondary data particularly when it is panel data over the years data then we have to go for interpolation uh, extrapolation and smoothening of data is very important okay now comes to how to collect sam uh, data or how sampling because we cannot go for a complete enumeration we cannot cover each and every household so when we have to sample then there are so many techniques simple random sampling it is the best technique but it uh, if we have to apply it to one very large area suppose it is a national level study then simple random sampling if it is five percent or one percent also even then it is so huge data that we cannot collect it we cannot manage it and then multi-stage sampling is there multi-stage sampling is that we uh, divide uh, suppose it is a national study then we divide states in different strata strata should be uniform within themselves and heterogeneous between themselves or among themselves suppose uh, if entire india has to be uh, divided into strata then 15 agroclimatic zones are the best strata rather than the states the 15 agroclimatic zones given by the then uh, planning commission are the best strata as far as agriculture is concerned so because they are uh, comparatively homogeneous within themselves and heterogeneous between or among themselves so, suppose for example himachal jammu kashmir and uttarakhand they are in agroclimatic zone one and punjab haryana western up they are in agroclimatic zone six then the conditions of six are homogeneous within themselves and the conditions of zone one they are homogeneous with, uh, uh, between themselves but when we compare do uh, six and one they are quite heterogeneous so these are the basic things which have to be taken care of. and uh, then strata then further strata within strata then we can go for uh, suppose it is uh, uh, agroclimate zone number one then himachal uttarakhand and jammu kashmir uh, if for some attributes uh, uh, all three states they have same variability then we can take only one state as a sample within suppose we take himachal then within, within himachal there are uh, four sub agroclimatic zones then those sub agroclimatic zones will become third level strata and uh, from uh, uh, four uh, sub agroclimatic zones there are uh, there may be three districts in one agroclimatic zones and how the uh, uh, they are supposed to be uh, homogeneous uh, or uh, the variability of, of the variable uh, of our interest will be quite less in that particular situation so then we can take one uh, district out of each uh, ag sub agroclimatic zone then when it comes to district then within district there are four five blocks then that, they, these are the different stages first stage was national level then second stage was uh, uh, first stage was our uh, agroclimatic zone uh, the Teen agroclimatic zone. The second stage was state. Third stage uh, was the uh, sub agroclimatic zone. Fourth state uh, stage was the district. Fifth stage can be a block. Then seventh stage can be a village. So it is called multi stage sampling technique. This is uh, uh, quite efficient when it comes to. Uh, time conservation is concerned and uh, money saving is concerned so uh, this is the most commonly used technique uh, when it uh, when the uh, geography of our uh, study is quite large then uh, these are all probability based sampling uh, simple random sampling or uh, the multi stage sampling these are probability based sampling then there is another probability proportional to size probability proportional to size uh, selects uh, more sample from uh, the areas where 
the uh, incidence of uh, the presence of the uh, variable of our interest is higher. But this is a called biased sampling, and uh, we need to handle it stati statistically. There are methods to handle it. Uh, but generally, probability proportional to size is uh, uh, used in case of uh, uh, success stories or uh, problem identification rather than uh, uh, getting overall situation of the uh, uh, overall scenario of the situation and for policy making. Then comes stratified cluster sample. This is uh, just like multi-stage sampling, but uh, here the st uh, there is only within the uh, same stage, there are different uh, clusters or different strata are uh, formed. Then systematic sampling. Systematic sampling. Uh, in systematic sampling, uh, we have complete list of uh, uh, members of the population, and then uh, we just select the first observation randomly and after that the rest of the observations they are selected in a period periodic manner suppose that it is a period of uh, 100 or period of uh, that if first uh, suppose it is period of 10 then first selection is 7 then next will be 17 27 37 47 57 67 so that this is a systematic sampling where the uh, subsequent uh, uh, observations or subsequent uh, respondents, they are uh, selected period, uh, periodical basis. Uh, then there comes non-probability samplings. Uh, there are non-probability samplings which are important, suppose snowball sampling. Snowball sampling is a classical example of COVID-19 uh, context finding. Context findings, uh, if I have uh, uh, COVID, then uh, my family members, they will be, uh, first of all, they will be checked. So uh, it is called a snowball sampling. Then their contacts will be further uh, checked. Then uh, if whosoever is positive, his all his contacts, they are, uh, they were being checked. So this is, uh, this type of sampling is uh, done when the occurrence of uh, event is unknown and that is, uh, uh, quite recent, uh, of quite recent uh, uh, origin and uh, not very well, very well understood and not very uh, well distributed. Uh, then quota sampling. Quota sampling where the, when we fix a particular uh, uh, number of uh, uh, sample I have to take. Suppose 20 farmers from each village. This is a quota sampling. But it is, uh, Sometimes it has a problem of inadequate uh, representation of sample. Suppose the uh, variation uh, in the variable of my interest, if it is quite high, then uh, my sample could be inadequate. And if uh, the variation uh, in the variable is uh, quite low, then my sample could be more than what is required. So uh, this is... Uh, a crude way of uh, uh, doing a sampling. Then, uh, purposive sampling. Purposive sampling is when we uh, deliberately select some uh, uh, area or some uh, uh, particular observation. Uh, then it is uh, it can it cannot be generalized. The results cannot be generalized. If we are selecting any area or uh, uh, unit pur pur purposively, then we cannot say that this represents the entire population. If I, I have selected, uh, uh, suppose, Shimla district of uh, Himachal Pradesh for understanding uh, uh, high density planting of apple, then I cannot say that my results belong to uh, northwestern Himalayas because I have purposely selected a district. If I can generalize my results only when I select uh, my sample uh, random, then sample size, uh, population variation, the variation will decide the sample. If variation is more, the sample will be more. If the uh, variation is less, the sample will be less. The sample size, there are techniques of uh, uh, estimating samples. If uh, you go, go on Google, uh, the uh, Statistical techniques are uh, available, freely available, and it's, it's not difficult. 
then there are compromised standards generally we follow compromise standards when uh, time uh, taking it time and money into consideration we uh, decide quota sample analysis of data there are two basic techniques of analysis of data one is quantitative and another is qualitative qualitative uh, is uh, mostly used in uh, kb case we are doing qualitative type of uh, analysis and quantitative is uh, when we go through modeling and uh, uh, high end statistics uh, high end econometrics is used then that is quantitative and uh, mostly it is used mixed methods mixed methods when uh, uh, the classic example of mixed method is tax tables uh, we have seen that uh, uh, in highly rated journals they started it doing uh, some decades back that one of the review uh, table where text is given in the table uh, that is mostly a uh, review of, uh, of different studies and uh, based on that a uh, text table is this that ta that text table is a qualitative research that is not a quantitative uh, sorry that is a quantitative not uh, 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 that is a qualitative that is not quantified whatsoever is not quantified that is not quanti and where quality attributes are discussed, for example, a success story of a person is given, then that is a qualitative. Or case study is given, then case study is a qualitative. Uh, and if uh, data is taken the, and their uh, uh, statistical models are applied, then that is quantitative. So uh, briefly, this is the description. Analysis of the data commonly recommended use analytical uh, randomized control trial which i already discussed that is a gold standard but it is uh, very rarely used and very difficult uh, and time consuming money consuming as far as randomized control trial is concerned uh, i have already discussed to uh, uh, that uh, baseline data or uh, 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 not baseline data in fact entire trial is established before the study is uh, initiated uh, then there are quasi experimental methods because the classic ex experimental is uh, uh, randomized control trial then quasi or semi experimental method for example difference in difference technique is applied in case of difference in difference technique we need to have baseline data and uh, once we have baseline data of uh, adopters and non-adopters both then before and after also at the time of uh, uh, execution we will uh, conduct study uh, of uh, uh, adopters as well as non-adopters so then we will have four different scenarios uh, before project starting the scenario of adopters and scenario of non-adopters then after the project the scenario of adopters and uh, the scenario of non-adopters. So this, this technique is called basically difference in difference technique. Then another is propensity score matching. Propensity score matching, uh, when we don't have baseline data, then propensity score matching is done. But here, in order to match attributes, uh, uh, we need a very large number of uh, uh, non-adopters. Generally, that is not the practice which is being adopted in KV cases. In KV case, what we are doing, we are taking less non-adopters and more adopters. And to the max maximum, we are taking an equal number of adopters and non-adopters. But if we have to go for randomized, uh, sorry, uh, propensity score matching, then as a rough uh, estimate or uh, rough number rule, uh, which is being uh, practiced by econometrists, we should have double uh, the sample of non-adopters compared to the adopters. Suppose adopters are 500, then non-adopters should be 1000. So these are two robot, uh, techniques which are generally used uh, by high-end researchers. There are so many other techniques depending upon the scenario. But now, uh, especially for the KVK scientists, the, I will take just five minutes now. I'm uh, about to conclude. For KVK scientists, before and after baseline, 
this is just uh, i would say summary of what we have discussed before and after situation uh, baseline or uh, benchmarking data uh, people are doing on memory call basis because uh, after three years uh, now i am conducting survey then i will uh, ask the farmer what did you do for three years back in order to generate baseline data but that is not uh, the best way of doing the things then with and without with and without is adopter non-adopter and before and after means uh, uh, the benchmark uh, versus uh, the assessment year the crucial care which has to be taken selection of non-adopted villages corresponding to the selected villages at kvk level when we uh, start a study we do take adopter villages we do, do adopt villages but we don't take non-adopted villages at that particular time and uh, then we don't go for benchmark surveys if uh, benchmark survey is being done then that is done only in adopted villages because at that time we don't have any idea of non-adopted villages so non-adopted villages have to be selected at the same time when uh, adopted villages have selected and if benchmark survey has to be done for both uh, uh, adopted as well as non-adopted and another thing is when we are conducting a baseline survey the whatsoever results are there we should immediately publish those results because so that uh, the editor of the journal when we when you are saying impact, uh, when you are sending impact paper to the journal then editor of the journal uh, have more confidence that you have not manipulated the baseline data so whatsoever data uh, is there that is real data which you published three four years back so that is a right practice uh, now this is the final table uh, which we have to take uh, which we have to consider when we are conducting uh, state level studies then we should examine ourselves whether our sampling plan was right or faulty if our sampling plan was faulty then uh the average land holding size of our estimates will not match to the national level or the state level estimates these are the uh average land holding size of uh, uh different states of india during 2015-16 in the situation assessment survey now uh, i have already said that uh, very soon we will be getting uh uh, the new estimates of uh, 22, uh, 22, 23, are, are, uh, uh, there was a brief uh, survey in 2018 also, uh, and uh, now we are uh, expecting uh, the new uh, estimates soon. But when we conduct uh, some national, uh, some state level survey, then we should immediately compare our uh, average land holding size of our estimates to the average land holding size of the state average. If there is a huge difference between these two figures, then we can easily come to know that our sample is not representative. We have select not selected uh, uh, all uh, the corresponding uh, correspond, uh, respondents from uh, the respective categories. So, uh, the same example which I gave uh, in the first slide that uh, we have the tendency of going to the large farmers and uh, uh, taking more large farmers in our sample and uh, less small and marginal farmers in our sample because less uh, small and uh, marginal farmers they generally do not uh, follow our uh, uh, technical guidance meticulously so they do, do not uh, keep contact with ourselves and we don't keep in contact with themselves because they don't respond adequately to our uh, stimulus. So, uh, but du during uh, our surveys, we should be very particular to have adequate representation from each land size holding class. So, this is all. Thank you very much. Uh, I took five minutes more and. Uh, 
sorry for that uh, and if there are some questions and uh, dr pragya or uh, the other organizers if they can intervene then, uh, then uh, i hand over uh, the mic to them thank you very much thank you very much sir for uh, elaborated lecture on impact assessment so if there is a question you can ask uh, somebody raise hands also they can directly ask i have unmuted you all There is some Ashwin Kumar. He has raised hand. So if there is no more questions or no questions, I will ending this meeting. Is there any question? I think no. So thank you, uh, sir, for sparing your valuable time. Uh, although today is a holiday, still you are uh, sparing your time for this lecture. Uh, thanks uh, once again to the all the participants for also joining us today. Thank you, one and all. I'm ending the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Pragya. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you.